Hi everyone, welcome to another Facebook Live. I am Jeff Palmer, founder and CEO of Clean Machine, we are a plant-based fitness nutrition company. Today I am going to be talking about nitric oxide. So what is nitric oxide or NO? Uh, actually, let me <laughs> remove the banner so that you can see me. There you go. So yeah, so uh, what is nitric oxide? Now the title of this, this talk will be uh, plant-based pump and why plant-based uh, for nitric oxide? I'm gonna talk about a couple of different studies. Um, the first to lead off with, I'm going to go ahead and place in the comments section. Hold on just a second, let me put it in the comments section. And I'll pull it up on the screen so that you can read it. Um, this way you can see the actual study there too, right down below. So the study is dietary nitrate intake is positively associated with muscle function in men and women, independent of physical activity levels. So this is a really interesting study because it's showing um, on a rare occasion where dietary intervention can actually help with muscle growth, even with or without exercise. So this is how powerful these plants are. And what are nitrates? Okay, so let's back up a minute. What is nitric oxide? Let me go ahead and pull up the information here and I'll go ahead and read it to you. But before we get started, I wanna throw in the disclaimer. This video is for in information and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Um, so in 1998, uh, the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine was awarded to the scientists for their discovery. It was a team of scientists, three different scientists that pulled their research together. It was awarded to these scientists for their discovery of nitric oxide as a signaling molecule. Now, this is kind of interesting because we have lots of different chemicals in our, in our body um, functioning. And sometimes these chemicals actually are signaling devices. They are communication um, tools for our body. And in this case, nitric oxide uh, is a gas basically that is released into our blood vessels that allows our blood vessels to vasodilate or vaso blood vessel dilate, enlarge or open up. Now this is really good, healthy thing to happen. This happens in three different ways. The first is obviously exercise. When you exercise, your blood vessels will dilate some so that you get more blood flow. This allows more oxygen to get to the muscles, to the brain, of course, too, as well, but also allows nutrition, amino acids, phytonutrients, uh, micronutrients, macronutrients, all to get to the muscles easier because the blood vessels are opened up. And this allows more blood flow to the muscle, but also as you are exercising, this allows more blood flow away from the muscle too as well, because you are creating like an engine, like a car engine creating waste products. This muscle exercise is creating waste and you need to get that away from the muscles so it doesn't degrade, harm, tear down the muscles. Now, when we exercise, we create free radicals, right? Oxygen species, ROS, radical oxygen species. These are um, can tear down the tissues and muscle tissues. So that's what we feel a little bit in the soreness is some of that being actually um, degrading on the muscle. Some of it is minor tears uh, and, and uh, stresses on the tissues itself. And some of it is when they're rebuilding and, and being repaired. So that's what we call the delayed onset muscle soreness or DOMS. So nitric oxide is really important, not just for pump, just so you feel bigger and look bigger. No, that's not, you know, I don't like the word pump so much, but, you know, it feels really good. And there is actually a important role that that pump uh, plays in the muscle tissue. When you are gorging the muscle with blood, it fills and tightens the tissue. So when the tissue is flexing, when you're exercising it, right, it is squeezing out arachidonic acid, which is an omega-6 fatty acid, into the bloodstream, which in itself is a cell signaler. It sells 
hey, come on over to the muscle, feed this muscle with nutrients so it can heal and repair. It is pro-inflammatory, so it brings an inflammatory response. That means, hey, come over here and let's fix this and repair this. This is all part of the natural process of working on exercise. This is a good thing. So this opening of blood vessels and then, then letting it relax after your workout is a really great way to basically exercise your cardiovascular system. So this is really important, but nitric oxide, back to that, this plays a role. Now, nitric oxide is produced by the bodies in, in a couple of different ways. We mentioned um, one, exercise. Another is actually breathing, believe it or not. So our body uses nitric oxide for a lot of cool things. I'm going to touch on a few of, of the things that nitric oxide is used for in the human body. The first is when you breathe through your nose. So they have little cilial hair, hairs <laughs> in there, um, which actually when you are breathing and breathing out, the body is actually creating nitric oxide. Uh, so it's a nitrogen molecule with two oxygens in O2 stuck to it. So this nitric oxide, is very um, abrasive to viruses and bacteria. Now, this is really important because most of the viruses and bacteria, including COVID, come in through our nose. About 90, 95% enter through our nose, obviously some through our mouth, and then there are other ways that can get into our system too as well, but mostly through the nose. So the body has a cool defensive way using nitric oxide, right? Our own body through our mechanism of breathing. And what those little cilial hairs do is they grab this nitric oxide and put it on the end of it, and then use that to actually, as you're breathing in and out, because remember when you're exercise, what are you doing? breathing hard. And that breathing is actually creating a self-defense mechanism. That's why exercise is so important for your immune response too, as well. This nitric oxide then in your nose kills those viruses and, and bacteria in there and helps protect against it. So that's a cool use of nitric oxide. But then there is number two, dietary nitrates. Now, dietary nitrates are found mostly in plants, but some in animals too, as well. There, don't get this confused with, uh, that's the naturally occurring nitrates that are in plants that are health promoting for the body. Do not get this confused with nitrates as a preservative that are added to many meat products to keep the meat from rotting, basically. Because remember that nitric oxide or nitrates can help prevent spoilage because it kills the bacteria. So human beings figure that out, put nitrates onto the meat itself to keep it from rotting so they stay fresh longer. And then when we consume that, a bad thing happens. What happens is it converts in our, bio, in our uh, digestive tract. Those nitrates then convert to what's called nitrosamines. Now, nitrosamines have been shown to initiate different disease states, including possibly cancer. So not a good thing. So you're thinking, okay, well, what about the nitrates that are naturally occurring in plants like dark greens and all these healthy fruits and vegetables? Beets are high in uh, nitrates too as well. Um, uh, actually, some of the herbs like parsley uh, and, and spinach, very high in nitrates, dark greens, and especially the herbal plants, uh, really high in, in nitrates. But well, then are those bad? No. And the reason being is... Uh, uh, nitrosamines are a pro-oxidant, right? They oxidize and oxidation can cause damage to cells. And this is where the whole disruption can come in from the nitrates that are found in meat because there's no vitamin C in meat products and eggs or fish or dairy, none, zero. That only comes from plants. Plants have vitamin C, other polyphenols and many antioxidants that actually grab those nitrosamines and neutralize them so that there's no negative effect. That's why dietary nitrates in plants, great thing, right? They help produce nitric oxide in our body. Nitrates in animal products produce nitrosamines, which can produce disease states. Big difference, right? You, you, you get nitrates from meat, cancer and disease states. You get nitrates from plants, lots of health benefits, lowering blood pressure, opening up your blood vessels, getting more oxygen to the brain, to the heart, to the muscles and increasing muscular performance. That was what's cool about that last study is it increases muscle performance even when you're not exercising. Now that's really cool.
So nitrate's really important. That is a one function, how it, and here's how it happens, which is really cool because it has another benefit. When you consume nitrates in a plant and you chew them, it mixes with your saliva and turns that nitrate into nitrite. Now, nitrite is a direct precursor of nitric oxide, but here's what happened. As that nitrite from your saliva, from chewing plants, gets into your stomach, the stomach acid itself turns that nitrite into nitric oxide, which then can be absorbed immediately into the bloodstream and produce that nitric oxide. Just one good cup of beet juice can give you a nitric oxide boost for 48 hours. <laughs> oh my God, two days worth of good vasodilation protection, good endothelial function. Endothelial is the lining inside of that blood vessel. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a, a picture real quick and show you what that looks like. Um, here we go. And this is a picture of vasodilation. As you can see in the picture uh, on the left is when the uh, blood vessel is at least my left. I don't know if it's your left. The smaller one. Let's just say that. The, the smaller picture is when the uh, blood vessel is, is uh, relaxed. When nitric oxide comes, it stimulates the blood vessel to open up. This allows more blood flow. And remember, this process of vasodilation is required for men for sexual function, right? <laughs> this, is, this is how the body the male body has an erection, it's blood flow. And this vasodilation creates more blood flow. So remember, higher plants, higher nitrates, especially those uh, plants with dark greens, cacao, uh, different fruits and vegetables, all really great sources of this nitrates allow the blood vessels to open up and healthier heart, healthier brain function, healthier vascular uh, expansion, so less risk for hypertension and diabetes, which, uh, excuse me, hypertension and blood, uh, high blood pressure. So all of these are great healthy things that are provided by plants, and the reverse happens when you eat animal products. When you eat animal products, the fat and triglycerides then get into the system and clog that up and actually reduce the blood flow. This oxidized fat and stuff causes damage to the endothelial lining. So this is where you can get into some trouble. So this is where uh, dietary nitrates in plants, really good thing because they're loaded with the polyphenols and antioxidants that also have a positive effect on uh, vasodilation. And this is really cool because there are multiple ways that plants help with vasodilation, whereas multiple ways that meat can actually be uh, declining of it. And I'll talk about a study and I'll post that study up in just a second. But let's let's pull up the, um, um, the next one. And we're going to look at, um, that was the muscle function. Okay. And so then uh, the next one is there is a, a system called the arginine citrulline uh, nitric oxide synthase or NOS uh, pathway. So arginine can convert to citrulline, which is a non-essential amino acid, and back and forth. The body can switch these back and forth. So it's called a cycle. It goes from arginine to citrulline to um, nitric oxide synthase, and then produces the nitric oxide. Now, the problem with this pathway is that it doesn't last very long. <laughs> so uh, as a matter of fact, uh, a nitric oxide molecule created in this pathway can could last for just a few seconds before it's actually neutralized by free radicals or other things in the body. So you need a constant stream of this. Fortunately, we're, we're getting arginine mostly from um, are uh, protein sources. Now, is there a difference in these protein sources? Yes, big difference. So what are some good sources of arginine in proteins? Well, I'm gonna pull up this, this one and show you. Okay, this is a chart of amino acid profile, which is what are the different levels of each one of these amino acids 
in different sources of protein. And if you look at the top, it says whey protein in the first column. In the second column, it says pea protein. Well, if you look at arginine, which is circled in green right there, arginine in whey protein is 3.6 grams per 100 grams of protein. The arginine in pea protein and in lentine is about 8.7 grams. That's two and a half times as much arginine in plants than in whey protein. You guessed it. <laughs> plants are two and a half times more effective at creating nitric oxide uh, through the arginine citrulline cycle than whey protein. Sorry, whey protein, you don't get as good a pump. <laughs> it's true though. And this is why it's so important to get these proteins from their original source. Remember, arginine is only made by plants and some bacteria. That's not a food source though. In our food system, all arginine, which is an essential amino acid, is made by plants. Animals cannot make arginine. We can make citrulline from arginine, which is a non-essential, but we cannot make. Animals, humans cannot make it. We have to get it from our diet. And whether you get that arginine from a plant, an animal source, that, uh, that arginine originally came from a plant because it's an essential amino acid. So we've seen that nitrates, bad, can cause cancer with nitrosamines in animals. Nitrates in plants, awesome, creates nitric oxide full of antioxidants, uh, uh, which quench those free radicals during workout, vasodilate, and do not cause any negative side effects like the, the animal nitrates can do. Now, here is the third way, and I think is the cooler and even better way than the nitrates that are found in plants. These are also found in plants, though. They are polyphenols. Polyphenols are phytonutrients that are found exclusively in plants, uh, phyto, plant, nutrients, nutrition. So this is, this is a really important one. Let me pull up the study on this one, too. But there's been lots of studies out there uh, that have looked at um, uh, how polyphenols and other antioxidants and phytonutrients only in plants can actually not only get the body to produce more of its own nitric oxide. Now, this is cool because what you're doing is giving the body what it needs to produce its own nitric oxide, not just the building blocks like arginine. And remember, when you consume arginine, if you're doing it as a supplement, you'll need three grams. That's 3,000 milligrams to get it. And to properly have it work for you, you'll need a time release mechanism in the, in the supplement. If you're buying straight arginine, it won't work the same way. The arginine all dump into the bloodstream all at once. It'll get converted and then quickly dis dissipate. So it won't last. Uh, only the products that you see out there that have a specific pharmaceutical time release system in them. I know I worked for two of those companies that produce the top two selling uh, nitric oxide products in there. Do it. When you see this arginine sitting in pre-workout powders all by its isolated self, it's, it's really not doing much of anything. So you need a time release system. The other way is obvious to get it from food. And your food proteins have a natural built-in mechanism to release that arginine into the system slowly, same as a time release system that you would find in an advanced and properly formulated uh, system. These, these, these products with, with arginine in their powder form in, in the, uh, the pre-workouts are basically useless. Um, so that's, that's not the best way. Arginine is actually a very non-essential way. It's a backup system that the body can make uh, nitric oxide from the substrate. More importantly is just getting a sufficient amount of protein, let the body do its own thing with that. But more importantly, is getting those nitrates. And then even more importantly is these polyphenols. So let's put up the next study. Um, and this one is uh, the intake and time dependence of blueberry flavonoids. Now, flavonoids are a group of polyphenols. Polyphenols include catechins, flavonoids, um, uh, cyanidins, 
uh, all these different uh, types of things that you hear about that are phytochemicals in plants. So polyphenols is more the kind of uh, total group of those. There's lots of different polyphenols that plants make. But these polyphenols have antioxidant properties, but they're also prebiotics. We now know that our microbiome actually eats some of these uh, polyphenols and produces really cool chemicals. They poop out our little microbiome bacteria, grab and eat some of these polyphenols, and they poop out these metabolites, these little um, chemicals that have even stronger and more beneficial effects to them too. So polyphenols have even a downstream positive effect that you don't get. And remember, polyphenols only come from plants. You don't get them from animals. They are a plant phytonutrient. So I'm going to put up this um, this next study, copy it and paste it into the comments section. Comments. This one's looking at blueberries because blueberries are very rich in polyphenols and antioxidants, one of the highest of the fruits, um, uh, with acai being a little bit higher in antioxidants. Um, but uh, so let me go ahead and put this one on the screen for you. So this study says the intake and, uh, of, uh, and time dependence of blueberry flavonoids induced improvements in vascular function. Um, so the conclusion was, as you can see on the screen there, the blueberry intake acutely, which is really strongly, improves vascular function in healthy men in a time and intake dependent manner. So basically the more we eat, the better off we are. Now, these polyphenols can be found in blueberries, in acai, in, in uh, dark greens uh, have these polyphenols or rich in polyphenols too as well. Um, so there are a lot of different types of polyphenols and, and these show they do this. Now, how is the body then, help, how is this helping create nitric oxide in the body? Well, it's twofold. It's helping stimulate the body to produce its own nitric oxide, and it helps maintain that nitric oxide. Remember I said nitric oxide has a tendency to uh, dissipate very quickly in the body, sometimes as few as a few seconds. Um, but how do you get it to maintain so you have lasting beneficial health benefits, uh, including pump, including uh, blood flow to the brain, blood flow to blood flow to the genitalia in both men and women, by the way, uh, which is important for sexual health and sexual pleasure as well. Um, but um, so how does this help? Well, what does polyphenols have a multi effect in protecting the nitric oxide? So these polyphenols and antioxidants can wrap around the nitric oxide and protect it so the nitric oxide can go around stimulating and doing more of its work and delivering on those beneficial uh, effects for hours, and in some cases, up to a day or even more. So these have really long-lasting effects, and that's why polyphenols may be the best avenue, better than arginine, better than citrulline, better than nitrates. The, the cool thing is that most plants have those nitrates and polyphenols <laughs> combined. So you're getting the best of both worlds, the stimulation and production of the nitrates, but uh, through nitric oxide, but also the preservation, keeping that nitric oxide active so it can do all and deliver all those health benefits, benefits for you. That's what's really cool about this product that I uh, chose for uh, N10s, our clean pre-workout. So I know that this is a really important function, not only for, for health benefits, but also for muscular benefits. Remember I showed that very first study that showed it increased muscle performance, even if you weren't exercising. So this is really important. That's how important nitric oxide, why it won a Nobel Prize uh, for its discovery. It is an amazing molecule, nitric oxide is. Really important for doing it, for, for health and for fitness. So this is the reason why I picked this one. So the scientists got together and identified some of the very best plants at producing these and protecting these nitric oxide molecules. So they pulled seven plants together. And these seven plants 
which are blueberry, green tea, turmeric, tart cherry, green coffee bean, and broccoli. So these seven extracts they found to be synergistically, that means working together, helping each other out, these seven different um, uh, plants work together and they, they, so they did a study on it. So what did they find in the study? I'm gonna pull that up on the screen now. So what is S7? S7 is seven different plants that have been clinically shown to increase nitric oxide by 230%. This is awesome. This is what you want. This is great for vascular health, great for getting increased blood flow to the muscle tissue, to the brain, to the heart, to the liver, to the kidneys. This is incredible. Up to 230% increase in nitric oxide, lasting for up to three hours. Seven powerful plants that were identified for their potency and their ability to produce this working synergy synergistically together and then published in a human uh, clinical trial. This is awesome. And that's why I chose to put it into our product mix, not some cheap arginine or underdose citrulline or some of the other things that are out there, nitrates for God's sakes that can actually cause cancer if they're not properly formulated. Um, so those do not deliver the health benefits that this does in a positive way is powerful antioxidants, powerful um, uh, free radical scavenging. Remember when you're exercising, you're creating free radicals, just like when you rev the car engine, you're creating exhaust. It's the same thing, it's waste. Our body, when it's working, creates waste. It's energetic waste. So by, by taking these polyphenols and concentrating them, 50 milligrams, just 50 milligrams, will do more than an entire cup and a half of blueberries or bushels of kale or any of these things, which is amazing because yes, these we can get some of these benefits from eating food in larger quantities. Now, the problem with this is that our blueberries today are so bred for being plump and full of water and full of sweetness and full of sugar, that they've lost some of their antioxidant ability. So the original study that I had posted was on wild blueberries. And fortunately, now you can actually get wild blueberries. Uh, this is from Whole Foods, by the way, organic wild blueberries. Wild blueberries have about 10 times the antioxidant power of regular blueberries. So I, I strongly suggest if you can find wild blueberries available, use them instead of regular blueberries and you get much more benefits from them, health benefits from them. So the wild blueberries, a cup and a half of them is what it would take of the wild blueberries, of the uh, non-wild blueberries, the general blueberries that you find in a grocery store, even more than that. So you'd have to take probably several cups of blueberries just to get the, the effects, not even get the uh, effects of just 50 milligrams of S7, which is combining these different plants together for their beneficial powers in extract form. And it's so much easier to take just a little scoop and, and mix it and drink it down. You get all those benefits while you're working out without having to consume a uh, huge amount of plants before you work out, which would not be the best thing to do. Remember, when you fill your belly full of food, blood rushes to your stomach for proper digestion, to carry away nutrients, to deliver enzymes and things like this. It all rushes to your blood. Uh, and that's why people can feel a little tired when they eat a big meal, because normally most of the blood is going to our brain. Our brain you know, uses, takes up about three to 5% of our body mass, yet uses 20% of our sugars and over 20% of our oxygen. So it's a big <laughs> consuming engine. So what our body needs to keep blood flow going there. When we eat a huge meal, all this blood rushes to our stomach to help with digestion and away from our brain. And then we can feel 
tired and sleepy because we're not getting enough oxygen. And of course, not enough oxygen to the brain. The brain is going to start shutting down its processes because it can't function without that oxygen and the glucose. Um, so this is why you wouldn't want to eat a big meal like this. This is why I formulate products that can give you all these rich benefits of the super plants out there that have that polyphenols, the antioxidants, all these rich things that help boost our nitric oxide, help it maintain so that it can stay active for longer, lasting up to three hours, 230% boost in nitric oxide for health benefits as well as muscle benefits. So that's why I choose very specifically what goes into each one of our products to make sure that you're getting the best health benefits as well as the best uh, muscle performance benefits. I want to see you succeed. I want you to go out there and represent what healthy looks like. If you can get better results in the gym and from your exercise and you feel better and look better, what better example you're going to set to inspire other people to say, hey, what are you doing? How come you're getting so much better results than I am in the gym? It's because of what you're putting in your body. And because that's important to me to see you succeed, I am choosing the absolute best. This was awarded uh, several uh, different awards, this ingredient S7, when it first came out for the research behind it and its efficacy in, in real published human data. Remember, we use four patented clinically proven ingredients. That's it. The rest is just flavoring and sweeteners. So all four of the ingredients are dosed exactly the way that was used in the human studies so that you can be confident that you're going to get similar results as what was used in the studies. This is shown to be proven effective in human research, not some puffery by throwing some cheap arginine in there from China at lower doses that will do absolutely nothing for you as far as pump or the citrulline or the dangerous nitrates that could actually trigger cancer. So, you know, this is why I'm very specific to make sure we get this body healthy you get the best ingredients out there. Yes, they're a little bit more expensive because those ingredient companies have to pay for that research. They have to do the science. They have to pull all this information together. That's why you get what you get. So I hope you enjoyed this. It's a, it's great science. It's, it's wonderful uh, empowerment knowledge once you have it. And um, I hope you enjoyed this and spread the information, share and like if you can. Let's get this information out there so more people are choosing products that really actually help them get the best. And we've got a great deal for you. If you are watching this video on YouTube or on Facebook or on Instagram, uh, during the month of October, all the way through October 31st, we are giving away uh, free vitamin D3 the first 100% pure organic vegan D3 made from organic algae. Uh, the first and only one that's 100% pure crystalline D3 uh, extracted from organic uh, algae. We're giving it away free every time you purchase our Intense product. So look for that. You can get it right now. Uh, no coupon necessary. Just go right on our website, uh, cleanmachineonline.com, and you can purchase uh, the Intense Clean Pre-Workout with S7 and get a free vitamin D3. Remember, winter season's coming up. Vitamin D3 has been shown in many, many, many studies uh, to be helpful in uh, strengthening our immune system to fight off uh, the bad guys during the winter. Enjoy, stay healthy, stay fit. Thank you for watching.